Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 6 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 4, Lesson 5, Plotting Points in the Coordinate Plane. All right, this is absolutely a critical lesson. It's one of the more important ones in all of Math 6 because for the first time, you're going to be plotting points in a coordinate grid. Now I know you're thinking, no, I've done that before, sure. But now we're going to be plotting some points that have coordinates that could include negative numbers. And once we have negative numbers at our disposal, which allow us to think about quantities that are less than zero, we can really have a coordinate grid where we can locate points all over the place with respect to an origin. So let's start by reviewing what you've already seen in terms of plotting points in earlier courses. All right, a review of plotting points. Let's take a look at exercise number one. For each of the following coordinate points, plot the point and label its letter. Remember that the first number, called the x-coordinate, indicates how far to the right of the origin to move, and the second number, the y-coordinate, indicates how far above the origin to move. Point A has been plotted as an example. All right, I'm just going to kind of shift this up because we don't need the wording anymore. Right? So let's talk about this a little bit. Now, by the way, um, those other points besides point A, like K, um, K L, M, uh, I think that's it. K and L and M, we're going to be getting to those in, a, in um, I think it's exercise number three. So don't worry about those right now. But remember, the general idea is this, right? If we've got a point like 12 comma 7, that first number literally tells us how far we should go to the right. So we're at zero, we go to the right 12 units. It's like we're on a number line and we're at 12. The second number, the 7, tells us how far up we should go. So we go up 7. Now don't get me wrong, you could easily go up 7 first and then go across, you know, 12 second. But since that number goes first, right, we typically think about going to the right and then going up. So if we were to look at letter B, right, which is at 4 comma 11, I'm going to want to go 4 units to the right, 11 units up, and I'm going to be right here. Right? Likewise, let's do a few more of them together. 10 comma 15, I'm going to be at the origin. I'm going to go 10 units to the right, 15 units up, and I'll be right there. So here's letter C. One more, and then we'll have you plot the rest of them on your own. 18 comma 3, I'm going to start at the origin. I'm going to go all the way over here, 18, and then I'm just going to go up three units. All right? So 18 comma 3. It is amazingly important. It is amazingly important that you understand that the first number is telling you how far to the right to go and the second number is telling you how far up to go. Flip-flopping those is an amazingly serious error as you go further in math. So we've got to nail those down now. What I'd like you to do now is pause the video and plot E, F, G, and H. G and H are a little bit more challenging. We'll talk about that, about why that is once we get to them. Pause the video now and plot the rest of those points. Now, most of the time, for obvious reasons, the two numbers in a coordinate point are different. But letter E is at 17, 17, which means we can go 17 units to the right, 17 units up, and we land right here. Right? Likewise, 8 comma 13, I'm going to go 8 units to the right, 13 units up, and I'm right here. Now let's talk about those last two. I always kind of struggle a little bit when one of the two coordinate points is 0. Right? So 12 comma 0. Starting at 0, that 12 tells me I'm going to go 12 units to the right, and that 0 tells me I'm not going to go up and down at all. So, we're right here. All right. Now that one I tend to have a pretty easy time with. It's when the 0 comes first. Because literally that means I'm at the origin and I shouldn't go any to the right. But then I have to go 8 units up. So, I'm right there. Absolutely, absolutely critical to be able to take a point whose coordinates are given and plot it on the coordinate grid. Let's take a look at a very important question, right? Exercise number two. 
The x and y coordinates of a point tell the horizontal and vertical distance from the origin. What are the coordinates of the origin itself? Plot it on the grid and label it point O. All right. So, where is the origin? Well, I, I, the entire time I've been pointing to it, right? I've been saying, oh, well, we start here at the origin, and then we do this, and then we do this, etc., etc. So the origin is right there, right? The origin is where the x and the y axes cross each other. That O is a little bit hard to distinguish between, from the zero. Now the coordinate points of the origin, right, are 0, comma, 0. Those two numbers tell me how far from the origin I am to the right and up from the origin, right? So if I'm at the origin itself, I've got to be at the point zero, zero. Now the last thing that we should be able to do already is we should be able to take points that are already plotted in the plane and come up with their coordinates. That can also be a little tricky. So let's take a look at that in exercise number three. So on the grid, right, you know, and this, you have just one grid, I keep re repeating it. I've got points J, K, L, and M. I want to come up with their coordinate points. Now remember, the first number tells me how far to the right I am. The second number tells me how far up I am. So if I just look at J, right, well, if I'm sitting at the origin, I'm going to go to the right 11 units, and I'm going to go up 18 units. I think. Let me look. Yep, sorry, it's a little bit hard to tell there. So I'm going to be to the right 11 and I'm going to go up 18. So J has coordinates 11, 18. All right. What I'd like you to do now is pause the video and try to come up with the coordinates for the other three points. Pause the video now. All right. K is pretty easy, right? To get to K, I'm going to go two units to the right and six units up. So K is at two comma six. L and M, again, a little bit of a challenge. To get to L, when I start at the origin, I'm going to go seven units to the right, but I'm not going to go any units up, and therefore L is at seven comma zero. On the other hand, m, I'm not going to go any units to the right, and therefore its x-coordinate is 0, but then I'm going to go up 18 units. So m is at 0, comma 18. Now, before we go on, right, one of the big limitations that we're running into here is I'm starting at the origin, and I'm kind of able to go to the right, and I'm able to go up. But what would be extremely helpful is that if I could be at the origin and not just go to the right, but also go to the left. Not just go up, but also go down. And we can do that as long as we extend both of these number lines to include negatives. So let's do that in the next exercise. Here we go. Negative numbers can be used to indicate left and down. Let's take a look at exercise number four. The coordinate grid below has the x-axis and y-axis crossing at the origin, the point whose coordinates are 0, 0. Three points have already been plotted as examples. Plot the remainder and label with their letters. All right, let's talk about this. So now remember, all you were looking at before was literally this up here. We didn't have this, this, or this portion. We only had this portion. So, when I look at letter A, 4, 7, it makes all the sense in the world, right? I'm 4 to the right and 7 units up. Awesome. But, let's take a look at B, negative 8, 2, right? That negative 8, right, that first coordinate always has told us how far to the right to go. But now that it's negative, that means we're going to start by going to the left 8 units. Now, the Y coordinate is 2, so that means we go up 2 units. So, that's where B is. Taking a look at C, C is at 9, comma, negative 6. Again, the 9 tells us we're going to move 9 units to the right of the origin, but the negative 6 then tells us we're going to move 6 units down, right? So those negatives now tell us left if they're on the first number and down if they're on the second number, all right? So if we're in letter D at negative 3, negative 9, negative 3, negative 9, what it means is when I start at the origin, I'm going to go to the left three units, that's negative three. I'm going to go down nine units, that's negative nine. 
and I end up way down here at letter D. All right, let me move this up a little bit so that we can see the, the grid a little bit better. All right, so what I'd like you to do is take a little bit of time and plot the remaining four. Go ahead and do that. All right, let's do six comma negative two. The first coordinate is positive. That means we're gonna to go to the right six units. Then the second coordinate's negative, so we're gonna go down two units. So letter E is right there. Letter F, negative four comma seven. That one tells us that we need to go to the left four units to begin, and then we're gonna go up seven units for our Y coordinate. So negative four, positive seven. Now just like before, I always like to throw in some examples where one of the two coordinates is zero. So letter G is negative six comma zero, which means I start at the origin, the negative six tells me I need to go to the left six units, the zero tells me I don't go up and down at all. So here's letter G. Letter H is very similar. The first coordinate is zero, which tells me I shouldn't go any left right. The second coordinate's negative four, which means I'm gonna go down four units. And there it is, okay? Now, you're gonna see a lot of kind of repetition in this particular lesson, right? Just like before, we wanna be able to plot points like we did here, but we also wanna be able to read off the coordinates of points that have been plotted. So let's take a look at that in exercise number five. For each point below, state its coordinates. All right, I've even got all the parentheses and the letters and all that, so all we have to do is figure where they're at. So let's take a look at letter A really quick, right? Now to get to letter A, I first wanna think about left, right. I've gotta to go to the left eight units, so the X coordinate's gonna be negative eight. Then I have to go up four units, so the Y coordinate is going to be positive four. So I've got negative eight, positive four. On the other hand, letter B is quite simple, right? Because for letter B, we're kind of in that area we're used to, right? For letter B, I need to go four units to the right, nine units up, simple, right? B has got coordinates of four comma nine. Let's do one more together and then have you do the rest of them on your own. Letter C, let's find it, it's down here, right? To get to letter C, I'm gonna go two units to the right, that's a positive two. Then I'm gonna go six units down, that's a negative six. So C is at two, negative six. All right, pause the video now and see if you can figure, fill out the rest of these coordinate points. All right, let's do D. So D is way over here to get to it. I start at the origin. I'm gonna go nine units to the right, so that's a positive nine. I'm gonna go one unit down, that's a negative one. So D is at nine comma negative one. Let's see, let's find letter E. Where do we have letter I? Ah, there's letter E. To get to letter E, I'm gonna go five units to the left, so that's negative five. I'm gonna go eight units down, that's negative eight. So letter E is at negative five negative eight. All right, finally F and G, right? These are my favorites. These are on the axes themselves. To get to letter F, I start at the origin. I go three units to the left. That'll be negative three. I don't go any distance up or down. So letter F has coordinates of negative three, zero. And letter G as well. I start at the origin. I don't go any distance left, right. I simply go down four units. So zero, negative four. And that's it, right? That's all she wrote. Um, let's summarize this lesson. Now, what we saw today was we reviewed how to use x, y coordinate pairs to locate a point whose coordinates have been given, right? Relative to some origin. And that makes sense. You know, engineers, scientists, economists, all sorts of people, you know, take graph grids and they decide, okay, here, this is where our starting point is, so to speak, all right? And then we wanna locate points compared to where that thing is. Now in the past, you were only able to locate points to the right of the origin and up from the origin. 
Now we've introduced negative numbers, which will allow us to locate points right left of the origin and up down from the origin. Always keep in mind that the first number represents that right left movement and the second number, the y coordinate, represents that up down movement. All right, get some practice on this at the homework. It's going to be really important for the next lesson. For now, I just want to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 6 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.